On Monday, George W. Bush will campaign in South Carolina for his brother. As you said tonight, and you've often said, the Iraq war and your opposition to it was a sign of your good judgment. In 2008, in an interview with Wolf Blitzer talking about President George W. Bush's conduct for the war, you said you were surprised that Democratic leader Nancy Pelosi didn't try to impeach him. You said, quote, which personally I think would have been a wonderful thing, a close quote. When you were asked what you meant by that, you said, for the war. For the war, he lied. He got us into the war with lies. Do you still believe President Bush should be impeached? Should have been First impeached? First of all, I have to say, as a businessman, I get along with everybody. I have business all over the world. I know so many of the people in the audience. And by the way, I'm a self-funder. I don't have. I have my wife and I have my son. That's all I have. I don't have this. So, let me just tell you. I get along with everybody, which is my obligation to my company, to myself, etc. Obviously, the war in Iraq was a big, fat mistake, all right? Now, you can take it any way you want. And it took, Je it took Jeb Bush, if you remember, at the beginning of his announcement, when he announced for president, took him five days. He went back. It was a mistake. It wasn't a mistake. It took him five days before his people told him what to say. And he ultimately said, it was a mistake. The war in Iraq, we spent two trillion dollars, thousands of lives. We don't even have it. Iran is taking over Iraq with the second largest oil reserves in the world. Obviously, it was a mistake. So George Bush made a mistake. We so, can make mistakes, but that one was a beauty. We should have never been in Iraq. We have destabilized right. the Middle East. But so you so I mean Yeah, so welcome to a, another video um, of my channel. Uh, as I mentioned before, the channel is, is veering towards a more political content channel. Um, and in this video, I'm reacting to uh, the 20, when Donald Trump was running first, when he first ran for president in 2016. And this video that I'm reacting to took place in the 2016 Republican primary. And it was during a debate that was hosted by CBS. I believe this was like towards the end, because if you look at the stage, there's only like four people or five people left. I could be wrong. But my, my interest comes from my previous legislative experience as far as I, I used to be a legislative staffer or uh, at the state level and at the federal level. Uh, I've been to DC. Um, I was mainly uh, based off here uh, where I live in South Texas, but uh, got to take some trips to, to DC. I used to live in Austin because I, I worked at the, at the state capitol, um, all for Democrats. And this was the first time in 2024, the first time I voted for a presidential candidate. I've been eligible to vote uh, in previous elections, but uh, I, was, I always wrote somebody in because I wasn't, you know, the, the candidates at that time. I didn't feel they were the right ones, uh, but uh, really Trump, this time around, uh, I voted for Trump, mainly my focus being uh, foreign policy, foreign affairs, and uh, the prevention of World War III, and my disappointment of the Democratic Party welcoming and really being engulfed by the established uh, what would you say, bureaucrats of the military industrial complex, the security, national security apparatus, uh, these people who are war hawks and always hungry for war, like there's not a war that they don't like, and always looking for somebody to fight overseas so that their money train can continue. Uh, people like uh, Liz Cheney, people like Dick Cheney, uh, and those types of people. Um, so when people, so when people like Dick Cheney and Liz Cheney endorse you for president, that's not a good thing. That means that you, you are the pro war candidate. If those people uh, uh, endorse you, that means that you will continue endless wars. You will continue endless conflicts. And you will push us even closer to World War Three. And so the Democratic Party used to have a base that railed against that, that would vomit 
if they ever heard that Liz Cheney and Dick Cheney were being welcomed to the Democratic Party and were being um, which celebrated for endorsing one of their candidates or even going out and campaigning with, with those types of people that like people in the Democratic Party, at least are used to be at that sort of base that hated that you welcome people like that and you kicked out Tulsi Gabbard, who was uh, against war, well, against um, needless wars, really, uh, who always advocated for war being the last resort and not the first impulse. You threw people like that out and you brought in people like Dick Cheney and Liz Cheney. And that just says it all about the current state of the Democratic Party and why I decided to um, vote for Donald Trump. And so here, what is important about this video is you need to look at this video as two viewpoints combating against each other. Try to take a take out if you don't like if you do not like Donald Trump, just try to pretend like that's not Donald Trump saying saying what he's saying and try to pretend it's not Jeb Bush saying what he's saying. What think about what each point of view represents and the people and narratives they represent. Jeb Bush comes from that establishment atmosphere. Jeb Bush's father George W. Bush's George W. Bush Sr. He was a president that was before Bill Clinton. I believe he was elected. What was it? Was it 88 to 92? If I'm mistaken, please correct me. I don't mind being corrected. Um, but before George W. Bush Sr. became president, he was the head of the CIA. If he wasn't the head, please correct me, but I know for sure he was a high-level uh, officer in the CIA, high-level, what would you say, director, operator, but I'm pretty sure he was a, the, the head of the CIA at one point in his career. And so he himself uh, launch, launched us into endless wars and advocated for spying programs and continual rising of tensions with uh, regarding foreign affairs, like with uh, Russia. Um, he was already delving into uh, the Middle East. His son, George W. Bush Jr., was the president after Bill Clinton from 2000 to 2008. So the president before Barack Obama. And obviously 9-11 happened under his watch. That happens and he goes and he uh, launches a war against Iraq and Afghanistan and he invades both countries. I think it was 2003 when he formally um, did those invasions and launched those wars. Why, why did he launch those wars? According to him and his address to the nations and his his spokespersons and the official narrative from all of these defense agencies and from the vice president Dick Cheney was because Iraq, Saddam Hussein, who led the country at the time, had weapons of mass destruction. That was being told to the public. Now the public at that time was in a f mood of fear because of what just happened. So really the public was patriotic. They supported America no matter what they, like people came together after what happened 9/11, and the sentiment of patriotism rose, uh, you know, to the highest point. We supported whatever, uh, you know, missions or whatnot the military had to do, just not only for retribution but for the name of safety and fighting terrorism. So of course, you know, there was not really many a lot of questions being asked, but eventually it came out that it was all lies that. Saddam Hussein, Iraq, Afghanistan did not have weapons of mass destruction, which is exactly what Donald Trump is saying, which is exactly what Democrats, when George Bush was in office, which is what some Democrats, even some elected official Democrats in D.C. Um, were saying. And so that's what Jeb Bush represents as far as what he's saying. 
what Donald Trump is saying represents the American people's sentiment. Because believe it or not, American, the American people are against war. They're not for uh, endless um, war. They're not for sending troops, their children, to die in wars that we have no business being in. And trillions of dollars were lost, like Trump said. But Dick Cheney, the vice president for George W. Bush at the time, the, the brother of, of Jeb Bush, Dick Cheney, the vice president at the time, when these wars were launched, before then, before becoming the vice president, he was the, the CEO of Halliburton, a defense contracting agency who, after these wars came about, when he was a vice president, received millions, if not trillions of dollars in defense contracts from the government for these wars. So there was a big uh, conflict of interest. And not only that, there was a, you could tell, I mean, just read between the lines. There was, there was a lot of interest in, uh, from Dick Cheney to launch those wars because the company that he used to be the CEO in was going to get a lot of money, millions, if not trillions. And he himself would be uh, compensated and also appreciated in so many other ways. And so this is why people like Donald Trump, because right now what he's doing really is metaphorically giving Jeb Bush and all these people that I said he represents the middle finger on behalf of the American people. So you, so you still think he should be impeached? I think it's my turn. Isn't it? You do whatever you want. You call it whatever you want. I want to tell you, they lied. Okay. They said there were weapons of mass destruction. There were none, and they knew there were none. There were no weapons of all mass right. okay. destruction. Okay. All right. Go. Governor Bush. When a member on the stage is brother gets attacked, I got brother about gets five or six. Do I get to do it five or six times, or just once nice. responding to that? So here's the deal. I'm sick and tired of Barack Obama blaming my brother for all of the problems that he's had. And frankly. Yeah, so Jeb Bush had no comeback because it's the truth, because what Donald Trump said was the truth. And say what you want, but when people say the truth, you can't really say anything back. And that's exactly what, what, what happened here. So he used the, what would you say? He used the the plot or the misdirection, I, I should say, the misdirection of Barack Obama, of bringing up Barack Obama when he had nothing to do in this debate and in, and in this situation right here, because he knows that the, that the people in attendance and the Republican Party uh, voters hate Barack Obama. So his thought process is by me bringing up Barack Obama, I'm going to get an applause and try to hopefully uh, lessen what Trump said, but mainly because he has no comeback. I could, I could care less about the insults that Donald Trump gives to me. It's blood sport for him. He enjoys it, and I'm glad he's happy about it. He but spent I am 22 sick million tired, dollars in I am sick and about. tired of him going after my family. My dad is the greatest man alive in my mind. And while, while Donald Trump was building a reality TV show, my brother was building a security apparatus to keep us safe, and I'm proud of what he did. And he's had the gall to go the after World my Trade mother. Center came he's down. He's had the gall to go after reign. my Remember mother. That. Hold on. Let me finish. He's had the gall to go after my mother. That's not keeping Look, us safe. Look, I won the lottery when I was born 63 years ago and looked up and I saw my mom. mom my mom is the strongest woman I know. She should this be running. This is not about okay. my family or his family. Okay. This is about the. Jeb said, uh, my mom is the strongest woman I know, and Trump said, uh, she should be running, basically saying, you know, your mom's tougher than you, so she should be the one up here. Um, you know, it's funny because since Donald Trump has ran, he's like that, like that pebble in the road that destroys the, what would you say, like the, uh, what do you call, I don't want to, uh, like the carousel, like he destroys that wagon uh, that is being pulled by the horses that have like, you know, your livelihoods. Uh, and so that's what Donald Trump is to the establishment, to the system. And so that's why people hate him. And they don't know what to do. Like it, it's, it's like a glitch in their brain. Like, 
I'm so used to this this robotic approach of like talking points and America's great and let's get America back to work. And then here comes Donald Trump talking all this shit and throwing jabs at me and I don't know what the hell to do. But Donald Trump basically said the truth there also that, you know, you're saying that my your brother kept us safe, but 9-11 happened under his his watch and his security apparatus was the one that was supposed to prevent that from happening. Really what happened after 9-11 was that security apparatus took advantage of the situation and used it to spy on Americans and violate First Amendment rights of the American people. And that has all been exposed by Edward Snowden. And so I'll leave it there. Thanks. Thank you all for watching. Like, comment. What do you all think about the video? Uh, peace.